So to start with some quick introductions. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Fraser. I'm one of the senior customer success managers here in the education team at Vivox. And I'm also delighted to say um, that we're also joined by James Wilson here as well. So James is very kindly given up his time to uh, come and speak to you folks today um, all around his particular use of VBOX and specifically using VBOX for interactive storytelling. So I'm going to introduce James um, a bit further in, in just a moment. Um, I have a couple of additional slides first and then I'm actually going to hand over to James directly um, and he's pretty much going to run the show um, and then we'll have some time for, for Q&A and questions towards the end. Um, so with that being said, um, in regards to questions. We do, as with all of our VBOX webinars, have a session set up for the purposes of today. So that is for two reasons. First of all, um, James's session will be interactive, so he does have some polls um, set up using VBOX, which he'll be running um, throughout his presentation. So I definitely encourage everyone to, to join the session so that you can get involved um, within that. And also we will be um, holding at least sort of five or ten minutes or so of Q&A at the end of the session. So if there's anything you wish to ask James based on his content here today, um, or indeed myself, if it's you know more of a general VBOX related question or something around functionality or, or that sort, you can obviously um, pose that to myself as well. Just to introduce James a little bit further, so James Wilson um, is a senior lecturer here from the University of Chichester. Um, and James's background um, it very much stems in the field of nursing and also interactive theatre um, within sort of teaching um, and uh, and the kind of bringing the interactive element to uh, to the general sort of um, pedagogical applications that exist. And James's biography is, is actually on the screen there, as you can see. So I'm not going to read through all of this, folks, but obviously you can have a read of that um, and then sort of uh, understand a little bit more around James's extensive background. Um, it's fair to say he's been very instrumental um, in, in sort of bringing to light where the uh, the, the nursing and allied, um, allied health faculty is within the University of Chichester today, but also um, for ourselves here at VVOX, um, James is considered very much a um, an ambassador and, and true advocate of VBOX. We've been very fortunate enough to, to sort of work with him on a number of things in the past, um, be it webinars and, um, and sort of case studies and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, always a pleasure to have, uh, have James on a webinar with us. Um, and I know he's got a really um, insightful and, and interesting session prepared for you all today. Um, we will also um, be circulating this on our on our YouTube uh, channel after the end of the session, folks. So if you do miss any of today's session and you wish to watch anything back later on, you will be able to find that on our channel with all of the slides on here, um, as well as some other information as well. And again, I'll mention that more towards the end of the session. But I think as we want to leave as much time for you as possible, James, and I wanted to kind of uh, let you keep your powder dry a little bit. I'm going to hand over to yourself now um, and you can uh, you can take it away from here and I will put myself on mute um, and, uh, and let you run the show. So I will give you the presenter capability now. There we go. The baton has been officially passed. Thank you very much, Fraser, for that very warm and, um, and, and, and lovely introduction. I think I'm going to need a bigger screen. My head is exploding with the, with, the, with the compliments there. So thank you very much. And again, thank you to Vivox for um, inviting uh, myself to uh, come and talk to you this afternoon. Um, so um, let's dig in. Let's have a little look at uh, Once Upon a Time using VVox for interactive storytelling. And it almost gives me the, the, the sort of opportunity to start off with these storytelling aspects and saying, gather round, welcome um, to this afternoon. And, um, and, and so let's look at what I'm going to be covering with you today. So, um, with, as, as, as Fraser mentioned, um, in the top right-hand corner, you'll see the session slides, uh, the session um, ID um, there. As with always with um, with, with, with VVox, um, the invitation there is to um, contribute a post uh, to the question and answer section. So we will have an opportunity to have uh, um, questions and answers at the end of um, my little presentation, a little session um, here today. So please feel free to ask all questions. You are very, very welcome. Um, but as you can see, what I'm going to kind of cover in the, the short time that we have together is first of all, I'm going to start off just uh, kind of giving the context around storytelling. And um, 
but then move very quickly on to how we've applied um, this aspect of storytelling in, in, in this case, sort of healthcare education um, to a, a, a sort of evolution of a, a, one of the techniques that we call in digital interactive theatre. So I'll give an explanation and expose of, um, of, of what that looks like. But I also have a, 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 a sort of version for you today um, of, of an example of a digital interactive theatre, and that's when we'll use our um, VVOX uh, um, interaction um, today. So all that to come, and of course the mandatory um, question and answer session at the end. So um, let's uh, let's 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 carry on. So. Um, Storytelling, thinking from your own perspective, um, when we've um, been able to sort of um, use um, storytelling within our own sort of teaching capacity, one of the areas that we become very aware of is that storytelling itself actually uh, it's, 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 it's built into us as human beings. We, 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 we are all um, storytellers. Think of a time, for example, when you've gone down to, um, you know, restaurants with friends and, and um, sat in, you know, pubs or sat with, um, I say, friends. One of the things that naturally comes about is you start telling stories to each other, things that maybe happened at the weekend or other likes. So we're naturally hardwired to tune into um, stories. So again, when we actually think about it, what is actually storytelling, then again, the sorts of things that we're actually looking at as definition is an individual's account of an event that creates a memorable picture in the mind of the listener. So again, anything that we give in a verbal context is trying to paint the picture in the person's head. Now, um, again, when we actually then apply that to our um, our students and our, our sort of teaching, um, certainly you will forgive me as a background in, 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 in nursing, uh, I will use examples from that. But um, one of the areas is, is that the, 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 the students themselves recognise that, again, as part of telling their story, understanding a patient's story is, is, is really key because it gets away from just simply seeing a person as a, a diagnostic criteria. Um, similarly as well, when we think about how we've applied it, then again, we have lots of different uh, ways of application, life story, case study. And again, I'll give a give a shout out to the great little resource um, of patient voices. Um, and again, um, uh, the, 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 there's many sort of um, applications from other organisations that have also used to pay patient voices in, in aspects of healthcare improvement, lived experience, gaining that sense of um, uh, individual patient and carer stories, as well as digital storytelling itself. Now, plenty of benefits, as you can imagine. Um, that again, when we tell stories, there's that great sense of connection with other people, that building up of, um, of, of empathy. Because when you tell a rocking story, as it were, we have that connection through feelings, through emotions, and that assists with us at a later date to be able to dial up um, certain memories. So there's a nice connection between emotion and memory. Um, Again, uh, when we um, you know, request stories, again, we can, people can feel heard. Um, and of course, again, as I said, it's engagement and memorable. Um, and again, linked very much there to feelings. But um, of course, we would never say that there's a kind of a, a panacea. You know, there are limitations uh, to storytelling as well. Um, again, you can see that any story is obviously going to be biased in the direction of the, the storyteller. So again, everybody brings a story. They also feed in their own version of that. And again, when we um, try to quantify um, the effectiveness of storytelling, that in itself has been uh, proven as a, as, a, as a different challenge over um, many years. And as we've seen in many um, sort of storytelling sessions, is that there is the potential for uh, triggering of trauma effects. So maintaining psychological safety within any um, session, particularly around stories in healthcare often, is worthy of make sure that we look after our room, our storyteller, and also the room of people that is there. But 
I just want to kind of sh share with you a little bit more about this thing called digital interactive theatre, a uh, sort of teaching modality that we've um, started to utilise um, a lot more here at um, Chichester. And so it itself, um, it has three main component parts. Uh, one is that we create a story. Um, and then instead of it just remaining a story, which is valuable in its own right, we then um, turn it into a drama. We turn it into a live piece of action theatre um, for an audience to observe. Um, and rather than actually inviting members of an audience up onto the stage to get involved in a piece of theatre, maybe to make changes or something akin to what we would recognise as forum theatre, for example, um, actually we have the audience there in the audience, but able to engage with the scenario, but utilising um, polling um, software such as Vivox. And um, that's how we've done it. So if I want to just give you a typical example, how would we put one together? What does it look like? Let's look under the hood. So number one, we create the story. And um, in history as well, one of the areas that we've um, looked at is um, worked with um, donated lived experiences um, from patients, carers, staff members, pulling them together, but also adding in um, references to evidence um, of that experience. Um, and once we actually have our story, we create it often in the form of a digital interactive theatre, because a story will work from start to finish. But what we will do is we will insert, like packs as a moment, or, or Vivox moments, as, uh, as, as I'll explain more about in a little minute or two, where we can reflect, we can feel, we can assess what's going on, or indeed make decisions on behalf of the um, actors on the stage. So again, uh, we then present it um, as a live scenario to our audiences, which means it can we can do this in a classroom. We don't need a simulation suite. We can actually do it in a classroom. Um, but and how to do that is we can recruit um, our our actors. And again, our actors we have um, uh, say we have um, uh, sort of our students, uh, not within the course but within the university if they're doing say acting um, um, uh, degrees etc. Um, but also our service users and carers that they are also um, recruited as um, actors to portray um, uh, different different types of characters within a story. Just want to highlight though, um, if we do have a donated lived experience story, um, then the person who provided us with the story, we would not have them acting, as it were, in the scenario. Again, there's an ethical um, dilemma there where we don't want people reliving, um, uh, particularly if they are unpleasant scenarios, um, then the purpose is to learn so they don't happen again, but not to, I say, repeat people's potential failures in situations. But then when we deliver the session, as I said, the sessions often come in two parts. We deliver the live scenario, again, using Vivox moments in order to get audience engagement. <clears throat> But then we will then at the end of that particular scenario, we'll then have a facilitated debrief, as it were, a dialogue with the audience. Um, and again, that is, is, is really nice in order to capture the issues that um, have been uh, looked at by the, by the, that have been raised by the interactive theatre. And of course, we're always wondering as well, did we do any good? Yeah, did it work? So we have three uh, different examples, uh, for ones that we've done in the past. Um, falling down the rabbit hole uh, was a donated lived experience, actually, and it was the experience of being sectioned under the Mental Health Act. This was actually the very first digital interactive theatre that we actually produced, and um, it was, uh, as I say, it was designed specifically to be delivered at a conference. Um, next up, you can see um, patient guard or bedside visitor and um, this was delivered to our own um, student nurses in order to explore the experience of a carer 
um, who is found themselves having to advocate on behalf of the patient because healthcare systems have maybe not advocated best on behalf of the patients due to so many different um, uh, contributing pressures, etc. But it lays bare um, and talk, talks about it from the lens of the, the family carer, as it were. Um, so again, very nice as, a, as an example. <clears throat> and uh, increasing public engagement as well. Um, this uh, finding balance we took out to um, sixth form colleges in order to increase um, the uh, mental health awareness um, of sixth form um, colleges students, particularly in the upper sixth, um, who were um, in the run up to um, undertaking their A-level um, exams. And so this um, was about the um, opportunity to actually signpost people to say, look, if you're struggling, here is some things that you can actually um, look at. So let's have a little example. So if you're actually logged on to VVox at the moment, that's absolutely brilliant because um, I'm going to play a little um, example um, for you. Now, Today, uh, because we're online, uh, I don't have any actors um, with me, so this is going to be very much um, an example of a digital interactive theatre, but in very much an oral format. Um, so um, here we go. So we're going to visit um, Hubbard Ward, and welcome to Hubbard Ward, because you out there are going to play the part of our student nurse in this scenario. And Hubbard Ward is a standard general um, ward that we would see in most hospitals without specialisms and the likes, but we have um, a number of bed areas um, which you have been asked to go and undertake some tasks. So you have been asked to gather information about all of the patients on the ward and fill out their nutrition and hydration intake. Um, this is what you do um, and, and you've been asked to do that by your practice assessor, the person who is um, assessing you in, as, as a student nurse. As one of the first people, as you look around, you see um, one of the patients lying in bed and it's a lady called Sonia Brown. And as you approach, you actually notice that she is kind of lost in thought. And as you approach, um, she notices you, but she jumps a little bit. It's a bit mildly startled. And so she says, um, oh, hi. You know when you have time on your hands, your brain takes you to different times in your life. And well, anyway, uh, what can I do for you? And so this is our first of our polls today. If you would have a little look um, on the VVOX, uh, you should see a request to make a decision about how you should engage. So, hello, Sonia. Uh, my name is uh, Student Nurse. Enter your name here. Um, how are you going to respond to her based on the communication you've just had? So, so I've been asked to find out how much you've had to eat and drink today. I hope that you were thinking about good times. Or you mentioned that your brain takes you to different times. What was on your mind? Or I often think about things that happened in the past and wondered if I would do something different as well. Have a little, have a little uh, look for a moment and um, uh, make, a make, make a decision. How should you respond or how will you respond in this particular situation? Lovely to see the answers all coming in. And I'm going to close the poll in a countdown of five, four, three, two, one. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop the poll. And you should now see the answers of everybody here today. And you can already see a spread. So you do then have a bit of a, a, a reply there. I'm going to go with the, 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 the most commonly answered one there, which was, ah, so... You mentioned that your brain takes you to different times. I'm wondering, um, uh, uh, Sonia, what was what was on your mind? And um, well, let's find out what was on Sonia's mind. Well, um, 
just want to um, just highlight just something that's going on in your own mind as you're actually asking this question. And uh, you realize that you do have several other patients, nutrition and hydration sheets to complete. And as you look at the timings, it is ebbing closer to your finish time. But as you record and the notes about Sonia's nutritional um, status, um, she kind of starts to, she looks up and again starts to speak, which is, oh, look at you, young and attractive with your life ahead of you. I messed up and made a real dumb decisions about my life. I decided to leave my husband. I really regret leaving the way I did. I hurt so many people. Ah, uh, okay. People give you stuff. Um, how are you going to respond this time? Similarly, once again, you can now see in the VVOX um, question and answer section, you have your responses. How are you going to respond? That sounds tough. How much have you had to drink today? Um, you probably did what seemed to be best at the time. People can be surprised and resilient sometimes. What made your decision to leave your husband? Oh, I know how you feel. I've regretted decisions as well. Take a few moments and um, see how you would respond. So I'm going to close the poll once again. It's great to see so many answers coming in. Um, in five, four, three, two, one stopping the poll now, which will share all the answers to you. As always with VVOX, and I'll explain this to any class as well, but these answers are completely anonymous. Um, so we have no idea what you as individuals are answering. So that's always very useful. But you can see um, from our very empathic group that the highest one you're going with is you probably did what seemed to be best at the time. People can be surprisingly resilient sometimes. So, answering this particular question, yeah, we then move on. You actually become distracted for a moment. The person in the next, um, in the next, the person, the next person you need to speak to about their nutrition and hydration is Mrs. Williamson. They're in the next bed, who has been repeatedly saying, "Nurse, nurse." Nurse, help, nurse, uh, for the duration of your conversation with Sonia. And um, of course, uh, um, Sonia um, uh, continues um, to have a conversation with you. And that is, yes, but it still troubles me after all this time. Once again, um, you're aware of these pressures, um, but just wondering, how are you going to respond? You sound worn down with it all. I'm sorry, but I really must get on. I'll pop back later and we can continue our conversation. What can I do to help? Time is a great healer. I'm sure you will feel better soon. Or, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to attend to Mrs. Williamson. Make your, take your time to um, decide. Think about the sorts of different issues that um, are going on in the situation. Think how you might respond or how might somebody respond. Um, bear in mind with VVOX as well, you can also change your mind. So even though you might have committed an answer, you can change it until I stop the poll. Of which I will do in five, four, three, two, one. Stopping the poll now. And you can see that, um, I'm sorry, but I really must uh, get on. I'll pop back later and we can continue our conversation. Now, as you are now bringing this conversation to an end, I'm actually going to skip over what the next um, question would actually be because um, one of the polls that I would often open up during all of this is a free text um, question about how are you feeling towards Sonia? And I'm asking a very specific question there about your feelings. I'm interested to understand right here, right now in this session, given the information that you have, 
to the best of your knowledge, how are you feeling towards Sonia? Now, this is the free text question, and, um, and as the answers can um, come on in as well, then I will take us through um, the next of the slides, because we have ended the session, as it were. Um, so again, the last question we would have skipped over. This is a sense of the um, uh, almost akin to a kind of choose your own adventure style. Once you make a decision, then it takes us off in certain directions. Often, uh, what I would do within these sorts of sessions, if it was live, is I would have each of those um, uh, answers linked to hyperlinks, which would then be able to take us off on the branching um, storyline that, um, that could take place. But I can see now um, that we've had quite a few responses in the, the chat in relation to um, how are you feeling towards Sonia? Uh, I'm just going to stop my, the poll right now and you can now see how the group has responded to um, our, our Sonia. And I put it in word cloud format for you um, and you can see there um, empathy, sympathetic, sorry, um, and, and again, she seems lonely. Um, and, and, and also as well, there is a sense of some frustration um, towards uh, um, um, uh, Sonia as well. All very legitimate, all very honest, and once again, because this is anonymous, um, it means that for me, I'm not going to be able to point out anyone and say, oh, what do you mean you felt frustrated? That's a given. It's a lovely way to be able to engage with your audience and get that sort of instant feedback. Now, what you're seeing on the screen is a sense of the debrief. So once we finish our session, we then come to the debrief. And um, if I can just um, go back to our very first um, results, what you'll see on your screen um, uh, with, with, with Vivox is the as how you answered as a group. What we're then able to do is in a session is actually go back to the um, answers and actually look at the reason behind each of those answers. So I'll be starting to do is saying, well, if you found that you were answering the first one, which is, I've been asked to find out how much you have had to eat and drink today, then one of the reveals about the, the analysis of that communication is it can often come across as feeling quite task focused. You're, you're, you know, this, the, 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 in this case, Sonia has given something to you uh, in her speech and language, and you're then thinking, how am I going to respond to this? by getting the on with the task of um, looking for nutrition and hydration sheets, job done, move on to the next person. So you can see how you can become task focused. Now, I would then be starting to do that with each of the answers. So we can start to look at um, the answers. Yeah, And again, what's quite nice is the one that got the most answers on this occasion was the third one here, which you mentioned that your brain takes you to different times and places and what was on your mind. It's, it's the technique of paraphrasing. So again, in a session which would be looking at communication, therapeutic communication, then that in itself is a nice area to then digress and actually look at different and explain different techniques that you can use by the bedside um, when working with um, vulnerable people who want to share their stories with you, who are more than um, just a task to be um, acted upon. And similarly there, you can often see how personalising you can have as your answers as well. It makes it all about you all of a sudden, not about the patient and their story and narrative. Um, similarly, if we looked at the um, other uh, results that came on in, um, you can see the second one that you answered there, and we would do the same again. And I want to just, uh, as, a, as, a, as a reveal these to you, I want to say that this is uh, an opportunity where it is all about dialogue and debate. What's also really nice about this is, again, through the invitation, is, is within an audience, the opportunity to do the question and answer in um, VVox uh, allows that opportunity for me to stop, pause, and have a little look at some of the comments or questions that might be coming in in the Q&A 
um, uh, part of VVOX. And certainly the reason for this is because, well, we can understand that some um, students in an audience, particularly larger audiences, often don't wish to put their hand up and um, stop um, a dialogue or a flow of a, of, of a lecturer's sort of a monologue um, mid-flow. So by actually putting uh, their thoughts as it happens into a Q&A really works quite nicely. Again, it's something which can actually then be picked up on by the facilitator, teacher, um, at, a, at a point when they stop and say, right, let's have a little look at your comments during the session. And we can then go towards that. Um, so you can actually see, therefore, um, with the example, how it, again, it allows a dialogue within an audience. Um, and again, uh, we show the results there for the third one, the uh, third question that you looked at. And as you can see, once again, it just provides the opportunity to have a little look at how you responded and how it could be perceived on the part of a, of, of a patient. Now, again, what's lovely within the dialogue and debate is some of them are, are they're, they're real. They're actually kind of genuine responses that people can um, create and give to um, patients. But, um, but ultimately, it allows for a forum within a classroom to be able to, to look at this. And of course, it's all based, as it were, on, um, on, on a story um, uh, uh, format. This was the one we didn't do, so I'll just move on to that one. Um, so just to wrap up uh, my little bit here, I'm just conscious of time, we'll get to the Q&A shortly, but um, I've mentioned about this idea of digital interactive theatre, again, three elements, storytelling, create a good story, compelling aspects of it, build it in such a way with VVOX moments, uh, which again provides a space for moments of decision making, which as we saw, took us off and ended that particular scenario um, early that's absolutely fine, but we can take us off in different directions. Um, our imagination takes us in the decision-making um, aspect, which again is helpful for clinical decision-making, cause and effect for our audiences. Again, we can in insert reflective moments. So it's okay during a session just to be quiet, you know, and offer um, audiences at moments to stop, to pause, and to commit their kind of thoughts or feelings um, to a, a, a VVOX free text um, um, uh, sort of slide. And again, we can capture moments of uh, for behaviour analysis. And again, we've had this where we observe as an audience, we observe um, action that's going on. And again, you're asking the audience, what do you see? What's going on here? Um, and that's quite useful as well, again, for things like diagnostic purposes or assessment um, aspects and whether your assumptions, as it were, and your reading of people's behaviour is the same as everybody else. Because as soon as we release the, the question from VVOX into the audience, you can then see how everybody else has perceived exactly the same observable scenario that you're watching. So you're all watching the same thing, but everybody's picking up something slightly different. And finally, of course, there's capturing that in the moment feelings. They're very real. They're very, um, again, in this case, anonymous. And that's great. Just puts it all in there. And when we share that with a group, it's interesting to see how people's effect or people can be affected by, again, watching or listening to the same um, thing. Everybody is slightly different. That's quite nice. It brings that into a debate and dialogue at the um, second half of our session as well. So once again, um, thinking about this sort of technique, one of the things is about observation. Yeah, uh, that's the scenario-based aspect of it. Um, and again, what is really useful is it brings in that element of being able to, to, to sort of ask people about what they think, how they feel, and what are they observing in relation to behaviour. So it's really rounded um, as, a, as, 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 a, as an area to look at. And of course, with decision-making, as mentioned, we have this ability to explore cause and effect, uh, which is quite nice as well. Um, and as a facilitator, it escapes the shackles of um, monologue, um, where you're just literally talking at an audience. 
something like what I'm doing right now, um, and um, and allows for much more of a debate um, in the, the the classroom, which again is great for group challenges, um, and again for for everybody to to share their views in a created psychologically safe space, which I think is essential for free flowing of thoughts and challenge um, for that educational uh, benefit. There we go, Fraser. I'm going to pass this back over to you um, and just say thank you very much for listening. And um, we'll come over to the sub questions. Thank you so much, James. That was so interesting and a real pleasure as always. Um, and such a creative and interesting way um, to to use Vivox. And I think I can see in the in the Q and A already. There's been quite a few sort of comments and, and and activity around that. So we'll get on to some questions in in just a second, James, if if it's okay with you. And um, we do have um, a bit of time left. So uh, yeah, it would be great to explore some of those and and and, and hear your thoughts. So I'll just share my screen very quickly and and just cover off um, a couple of very quick um, additional slides. That I had. Um, so yeah, it was just a very quick um, summarization of, uh, of, of some things before we move on to some questions. So I mentioned it at the start, but if you have missed any of today's session, if you've had to sort of dip in and out of things, um, or you just want to view anything back or, or sort of share with colleagues and that sort of thing, then please do um, watch our YouTube channel over the next few days, guys, as this will eventually be uploaded onto there. Um, and then you can sort of share and rewatch to your heart's content and uh, watch the wonderful James um, do his uh, presentation all again. I felt like I was right in Hubbard Ward amidst the uh, amidst the, uh, the the sort of tranquility there and, and right next to Sonia. So um, yeah, really appreciate you, uh, you sharing that exercise with us, James. And yeah, I would encourage anyone to to have a look at that um, if uh, if you know they will be interested in, in seeing James's content and just finally we also have um, our newsletter that you can subscribe to as well folks if, if you're not already um, a part of so you can find that at the bottom of our website um, and it's a uh, it's a simple link that you can then sign up to and that will allow you to keep up to date on the latest communications about Vivox, um, things such as these webinars that, that we run often get promoted in there, um, as well as things like functionality updates and those sort of things that you can be kept in the loop on the platform. So yeah, recommend having a look at both of those folks um, if, you, uh, if you haven't already. Um, and just very quickly as well, before we move on to some Q&A, um, I also just wanted to mention a couple of other things that we have in the pipeline. So um, actually tomorrow we're running um, another webinar, which is going to be more focused around sort of functionality and developments within Vivox itself. So um, it's our seasonal roundup session. So it's being hosted tomorrow at 3 p.m. So if you haven't already subscribed to that and you are interested, um, it's going to cover looking at some of the most recently added um, updates and functionality to Vivox that have occurred over the last few months or so, um, some of which have been pretty pivotal. Um, there's some big changes that have happened to the platform quite recently. Um, so I definitely encourage anyone to, to visit that um, if, you, if you haven't sort of uh, had a look at those just yet. Um, in addition, we also have a weekly session that we run every uh, Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m. UK time, um, and that's our beginner's guide to Vivox session, which is generally more tailored for those of you that are just sort of getting started with Vivox. So if you um, are sort of at the beginning of your journey and you want some more information around how to sort of best employ, um, you know, some of the strategies that James has talked about today, for example, and just understand the basics of how the tool works, um, that's a really great session to attend. It's a quick 15-minute session. Um, but it's also just an opportunity to get some face time with a member of the customer success team here at Vivox as well, um, if indeed that is something you would uh, you would like to do. So that pretty much concludes um, the uh, the slides that I had here. So let's get to uh, the the fun stuff and uh, have a look at some of the uh, some of the questions that have come in for um, for James here. So I'm just going to bring my screen over. Um, we will uh, explore some of the Q&A. So there has been quite a bit of activity, like I say, which is absolutely brilliant to see. Um, so lots of praise for you, James, first of all. A lot of people sort of saying um, hello and, and really looking forward to your session. Um, so I'm just going to hide some of these ones as we go, um, just to make life a bit easier. Uh, but as you can see, um, lots of sort of positive comments down below and a lot of love and appreciation for you, James, which is, which is great to see. Um, someone's just posted in here, um, how do you deliver this live in a session? or in a, in a teaching room? Do you have the Vivox dashboard open on a separate screen or laptop? And I guess just a bit around the actual process for, for the, the integration of, of Vivox, James. So did you want to just add a bit more to that from your side? 
certainly delighted. Um, so the, the when we say deliver it live in a teaching room, uh, again, picture the scene. We have the, the audience, as it were, the students actually in the room, and we'll set up a stage area. Um, we have rehearsed a scenario uh, akin to a piece of theatre, uh, again, linked to exactly the different types of um, decisions and or moments, uh, the, let's say the VVOX moments, when we will artificially stop the, um, the, 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 the scenario at certain points and the actors are tuned, uh, were rehearsed in such a way that they know their cues when to stop. Yeah. Um, when we do so, um, my um, approach um, is to have the um, questions or the, say the VVOX moments um, separate on a different uh, device. So again, what that allows actually is um, often in classrooms, you'll have a, you know, a PowerPoint sort of um, facility often. And what I usually put into that is almost a, a picture of the venue, sort of where is this happening, the scene that you're seeing. And it just provides that little bit more immersion, just so it, it, it says to the audience where this is happening. Um, but that means that the, the VVOX uh, question is happening often on a laptop, um, not built into the VVOX uh, PowerPoint add-in. Um, I have it on the side with another device. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for uh, for your response on that, James, and also to whoever has posted the question. I think just to add sort of my two cents, if you will, from my side. So there are multiple kind of ways that you can introduce and, and use VVOX in terms of the actual workflow. Um, James has very clearly demonstrated his, his sort of workflow here today in the sense that he will actually position his content on the slides and, um, and sort of run the content um, off screen, as it were. So you're then seeing the results back on your device um, for the reasons he's explained. But equally, you could also um, use VVOX through the native present view that is built in as part of the platform. So you can actually actually present and visualize your polls back to the audience um, through that present view that is built in as part of the, uh, the, the web-based tool. But also you have the ability to add and employ your polls directly into a presentation as well. So we do have an add-in for VVOX that will allow you to um, dynamically sort of apply um, any polls that you've configured in your session directly into a deck as well. So that can be quite useful in the sense that it allows you to really interlace those VVOX related questions um, in and amongst your content that's already sitting there and James actually mentioned a little bit around how um, how, how he's sort of done that historically with his sort of journey based and um, and, and decision based um, applications so lots of different workflows that you can employ with with regards to VBOX and ultimately um, it really comes down to whatever is best for yourself and what makes the most sense for the given scenario that uh, that you find yourself in but um, yeah thank you very much again for the question and thank you as well James um, I think we've got a few more people just saying hello um, we've got Carol there from Newcastle University who I actually know personally so great to see you Carol and thank you so much for tuning in today and I hope you found um, James's session useful. We can certainly, I'm sure, touch base on it when uh, when we next sort of get together. Um, again, a few more people um, saying uh, hello and good afternoon, which is lovely to see. I'm just going to hide these so we can have a look at some of the uh, some of the questions that have come in as well. Um, looks like we've got a legitimate one here. So someone said, James, really intrigued by how you get the related images and cartoons on the poll. Intrigued by how you do that. That's actually quite an interesting one, James. Did you want to share a little bit around um, how you source some of your imagery and also the process for adding them in, in into the polls? Yes, indeed. And um, I love that there's a further question as well. Reveal your secret to us. Oh, well, this one, it's, it's, it's more simpler than actually um, than anything, which is great. So um, the images that you see embedded um, in the questions and also the ones are used at the end of the, the, uh, the, the slide deck, um, they are, first of all, created by Adobe Firefly. Um, I, I, it, I, I was only introduced to it um, a, a short while ago, um, but if you, it's, it's, it's almost like the, the AI um, picture generator, um, and you can put in the, the 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 image to create graphics, you know, and that was how I did it. So I put like you know um, patient sleeping in bed, you know, or nurse looking angry, you know, um, and these are the images that they then draw for you. You get a selection of four in Adobe Firefly. You can refresh, um, but you can select them. And 
this is the lovely one for any librarians out there worried about copyright is that they are all copyright free so we can actually use them um, so we're not going to get fined by um, by, by, by using these particular um, images, um, which is great because it means that you then save the ones you want, and in the and so how you embed them in the VVox uh, polls. Um, if you've used VVox before, you'll play along with me right now. But as you create new as a as a as a, a question, what you will see is right next to the question title you will see a little box that I don't know how to describe a little box it's a little white box with what looks like a couple of little mountain ranges in it I don't quite know what that means but if you hover your um, uh, mouse over the box you'll see it come up as insert image and that's exactly what happens you click that button you drag and drop your image into there save it and it's embedded in your VVox question Simples. And right, actually, exactly. it adds a nice flavour um, to the to the polls as well. Um, uh, as I said, I was able to then link the imagery to the pressures uh, that our uh, student nurse character was um, facing at the time. I hope that answers the question. Yes, thank you so much, James. Sorry, I didn't mean to to cut across you there, but um, yeah, I think you've pretty much summed it up in terms of the, the VVox integration piece and, and how you add those questions in. Um, it's quite funny because I was actually looking at the imagery earlier and thinking um, there's almost some similarity to our own sort of graphics that, that we use here at VVox and it was almost kind of like we planned it. <laughs> with the, with, <laughs> of with course the we did, Fraser. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I think that was, yeah, really good question. and. Um, in terms of building upon that just a bit further, there are um, a few different options. You you can obviously upload and add your own imagery exactly like uh, James has just described through that process, or you can actually use um, the Unsplash image library as well. So when you go through that setting that James just referenced, you also have a tab um, that allows you to pull in imagery from the uh, from the Unsplash um, image uh, uh, collection there. So we, we have a link and an integration effectively directly into Unsplash, so you can effectively search the image and it will, it will pull through um, all of those choices for you as well. And you can integrate those into all of your questions. Um, and the good thing about that is all of our imagery also has the ability for alt text functionality as well. So um, with accessibility connotations in mind, if there are students potentially using screen readers, for example, if there are um, you know, sort of visual impairments at hand, it means they can still be included as well um, as, the, uh, as the screen reader will effectively read the underlying text behind all of the imagery. So so that's one of the things that's very core to us at VVox is making sure it is a platform um, that is open to all. Um, and uh, yeah, we have lots on our on our website around our accessibility um, if you want to explore any of that further. But um, yeah, another great question. Um, and thank you so much for uh, your very comprehensive answer, James. I think um, we've got some more questions in here that I can see, but I am just conscious of, of, of time here, folks. So maybe we'll look at um, possibly one or two more. Um, and if there's any left over that we haven't managed to get to today, um, Potentially we can um, explore and, and, and maybe I'll sort of pose those to James offline and we can um, maybe sort of get an answer out for uh, for those ones. Or um, indeed email me. I'd be very happy to enter into dialogue with people about uh, these sorts of uh, techniques. It's great fun. Fantastic. Thank you for uh, for the offer of that, James. That's that's much appreciated. Um, so I see someone else has, has posted a question here, um, obviously around the uh, the story based element, um, and they've they've sort of said, I like how you break up the story element to avoid the story fatigue, um, and then they've asked, how do you source the stories to use in this way? Um, so do you have a process that you employ, James, to um to sort of build out those stories, or or what do yeah. you kind of do in in, in that regard? Yeah, so um, I, I provided, hope it, was, it was the whistle stop tour, it really was, just a very brief when we went through the steps, but um, um, sources of stories come from different directions, as we can imagine. Um, one of my first um, sort of ventures into this and how it actually came about, Digital Interactive Theatre, as a, as a sort of a concept, was um, I approached a, a, a group called the Human Library and they were uh, a service user carer group who um, again were happy to tell their story in library form where um, members of the public could go and um, speak to um, human books as it were uh, pull them off the shelf and um, you know literally speak to a person about a particular 
lived experience that they had. So it was a pre um, a, a pre sort of um, uh, prepared uh, sort of story, as it were. Uh, and I approached the group and said, "Would would any of you like to share your stories so we can convert them into, um, you know, a, a digital interactive theatre, as it were?" Um, and yeah, uh, many people came forward happy to share their story. So once you actually have a story in a, a sort of format, this and, and they just literally tell the story. I also um, layer into the, the person who's donated their story um, to say, look, we're not going to create something that is verbatim theatre. I'm very much looking at this from an education and learning lens. Um, so if we have to move your story around a little bit, you know, or maybe add some creative bits, are you OK with that? So we have that sort of dialogue, um, but we work with in a co-design fashion where the service user is often with us, sometimes often in rehearsals as well, so that they can provide um, a certain um, inside track to our um, performers, our actors. Um, but also as well, other sources um, include, as I say, patient voices, um, and also um, there are many, many, um, shall we say, um, donated personal stories on um, blogs and you know mental health um, charity websites people donate the this is what happened to me and I think gathering all of these together gives you a sense of the conflict that some people can experience as well as the um, challenges that they face and it also gets it from the side of the staff the people who are on the other side as it were delivering the care and it's really good to bring that in and often how we do that as a source as well is look at well what is the best practice, what actually are healthcare and health and social care staff being told, as it were, that this is, this is the best guidance, this is the best way in which we should be um, undertaking our you know, actions with um, people. And what you can almost provide sometimes is either point out the challenges, the stressors, the areas where it's gone wrong, um, and, and pose these um, in story format to begin with. If you're going with a decision-making um, line, often how I've created those sorts of stories is start off by creating the best track. One, two, three, four, five, do this, do this, do this, you get to the end success or you know challenge. And then you double back and then create your distractors. Yeah, and take off off people in, in people's directions. And that's how to create a decision-making pathway. Um, for a live theatre approach, one of the um, challenges that you often come across is what's called branching storyline, which you have three decisions, which then branches off into three other decisions, three other decisions. Before you know it, you are taking off in whole sorts of direct directions, which you can't ask actors to hold all of these various different branches off in their head. However, what you can do with what's called a parallel um, a parallel path um, way approach is that you take a narrative out and if they make decisions then at a later point we choke them back in once again and you can take them off on a de another decision tree. It's just one of the techniques which you can use in order to um, produce both a, 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 a narrative storyline that's live um, and, and again scenario based. Um, obviously for what we demonstrated this afternoon you can hyperlink um, to different story trails. So you can actually take it out in a branch and storyline based on how we did it this afternoon. But for something that's live, it's uh, working with actors, but working again, very much co-design principles with our donated, if, if the story is donated. Um, and it just gives it such, such, such much more gravitas as well. And um, the power when you do turn around to an audience and say, we didn't just make this up. It's this person here's story, and it's a drop the mic moment. You know, everybody's now sitting in the room; they are totally and utterly immersed. Um, so it's, um, it's 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 um, it's great. Everyone's a winner. Amazing. Thank you so much, James. Well, I don't think I can add much more to that. So uh, thank you so much for uh, for your explanation again and, and and your time. And I think 
that probably about uh, concludes today's session, folks, as I know we are pretty much over time now, and I know also yourself, uh, you do need to go, James. So um, I just wanted to say a massive thank you uh, to yourself again, James, for giving up your time um, and, and sort of running this session here today. I think it's such an interesting and, and unique kind of approach to, to VBOX and um, a really interesting workflow. And actually, it kind of nicely led on from uh, Dr. Dean Whitcomb's session that you ran um, quite recently as well um, on the simulation-based learning. So again, that was, um, you know, there's a, some similarities there with um, with the with the context that, uh, that James has covered today. And again, I think they're both really um, interesting use cases um, for uh, in, employing VBOX into those approaches. So yeah, just a big thank you again, James, for your time. Um, and also for everyone who's kind of given up your time to attend today as well. Um, like I said, this will be hosted on our YouTube channel uh, further down the road if anyone wants to watch anything back. Um, I think James very kindly said he was happy to, um, you know, for, for anyone to contact him as well if, if they wanted any more kind of insight or wisdom around anything he's shared and presented on today. Um, or equally, if you have any questions for us as well, um, then do feel free to, uh, to get in touch with us through the various channels that are available on our website. But I think with that, folks, I'm going to end the session there um, and say a big thank you once again. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and week ahead um, and hope to uh, catch you all again soon on the next one. Do visit that session tomorrow, um, the seasonal roundup uh, webinar, if you are available and do have the time. Uh, but otherwise, we'll catch you on the next one and see you all soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fraser. Thank you, everybody, for attending today. Not at all, James. Thank you very much, folks. Take care now. Bye-bye.